first of all, a resident of Oak Street for 35 years, I am wholeheartedly in support of voting yes on Article 7. The, I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to provide this town with a firm financial footing. Um, the public access issue is a boogeyman. Uh, this land is surrounded by the Green Mountain National Forest. How much undevelopable uh, woods do we need in this state? And let me tell you what will happen to this land the day after we sell it, if the select board decides to sell it. It's absolutely nothing. It will remain in the same condition it is now. And I don't know how many of us have even set foot on the land. So we're being asked not to preserve the land for the public, but for the snowmobilers, the hikers, the cross-country people, and the birds. Okay, so let me finish. So, the day after this land is sold, the Green Mountain Club will still have a legally defensible easement to use the land. It will still have a legally defensible uh, right of first refusal to purchase 50 acres to buffer the long trail, although I don't know what they want to buffer it from because we've just got acres and acres and acres of woods. Vast will still have a legally defensible permit to use snowmobiles on the land. The cross-country uh, trail people have a legally defensible easement to use this land that cannot be controverted. Lastly, there will not even be an application to develop this land. The, the person buying it has said he has no intention of developing it. And if you think that he's going to turn into some boogeyman and show up with a project that destroys this land, nonsense. Let me introduce you to Act 250. Um, and Act 250 was passed by the legislature a long time ago. One of its main uh, goals is to protect wildlife, to protect wildlife habitat, to protect water sources, to protect trails. You can't get a permit to do anything. It'll be preserved forever. One last question, one last comment. Do you have 30 seconds? you have 30 seconds? Yes. On the finances, if you took 1.5 million and invested it for 10 years, you'd get a 6% return. That's $90,000 a year. That's 900,000 after 10 years plus 1.5 million. The handout right there says logging will generate $189,000 a year after, after 10 years. Time for the booze. Thank you. My name is Ray Alt, and um, I, I am thankful that the uh, select board is in favor of the motion because I think the select board is taking the correct step to learn more about what uh, interest there is in this property, which is an asset of the town, and in the end, after reviewing uh, proposals from all interested parties, which could include uh, trusts, land trusts, conservation organizations, private individuals willing to make a pass-through sale of a substantial part of the property to such an entity, uh, especially that land that has been identified by certain organizations as being special uh, to their interests. This is not a vote to sell the land. This is a vote to find out what the options are to do with it. And I think, given the response here tonight, that there is a high probability that they will choose to keep it, but repurpose it, make it more uh, carefully uh, managed. It already is possible that we can log it for the next four years, I'm told, and yield about $400,000 to the town. So they're truly trying to explore all options, and a yes vote does not vote to sell the land.
Justin Carter from Proctor. Um, like Matt, I'm an avid hunter and fisherman. My opinion is do not sell the land. Um, once it's gone, it's gone. You're never getting it back. We do not need to sell. You don't sell your assets. Once it's gone, it's gone. And people can say they're not going to develop it. I understand what Act 250 is, but just because you say it, it doesn't matter. Once they sign that dotted line, they can do what they want. Preserve the land, and I'd also like it may not be the appropriate time, but I'd like to request that this be decided by paper ballot rather than by hands. I have a few questions. I'm not for it, so I'm about Tommy Grace. Um, the gross. For the next five years, it's 361,000. The cost to log is 172, so it's like 47.5 percent. Is that what we're paying the forester to market? I mean, what are we paying to log? And then on the back side, there's a cost of putting the road of 100,000. Why would we pay to put a road to nowhere? I and mean, maybe just a better way we could consume, save more money if we did it a different way. Well, let's hand the rest. The road will be needed for the next logging project. It's about a mile long. Uh, it can only be logged in the summertime because of the steepness of the slope. The road is needed. It will be used for the next show in the convention for the Brunette out of 187,000. It will also be needed for the next two shows, which could take place in the next uh, 10 years, which are worth about 100,000 apiece. But in order to get to this land, we need the road. Why are we putting the road in? Why, do, why is it not the dig? I mean, why is the town paying for the road? If the road goes to nowhere, why are we paying? I mean, why not let the logger with a gravel skitter, a, a bigger log truck, or maybe talk to someone up on the McKinley Road up there, and maybe get a right of way through there? I mean, 100,000? I mean, we don't need to extend the road. I, I log up there. I know how steep it is. And there's also another road coming down to Greeno's Camp. I'm just trying to save the town money. And we're also paying 47.5% to have it marked. That's a lot of money. The Forester has felt that we could do better in the future to build a good road up there rather than one that a logger can take out just what he wants to take out. That's, that's the crux of the reason for the town building the road and taking it out of the next revenue stream. It's the next revenue stream that can be used in the future for two more logging shows. But, but let the logger take care of that. I prefer, I have the forester would prefer to have a... But there's not the forester's call, it's not a call. I can't right now. Okay, well I think the town should know this. It's a lot of money for a year. Hi, my name is Ava Loy Lanning, and I live on Ormsby Avenue. Um, I'm new to Proctor. My family and I have been in Proctor five years, and one of the reasons that we've chosen to make Proctor home is um, how committed and lovely this community is, um, both in its natural beauty and in its people. We come from Texas originally, so we understand the meaning of water shortage. Um, we understand what it means. Um, to uh, make sure that we keep and preserve our natural resources as much as we can. And um, I believe that the idea that we would even consider selling this um, beautiful property that's a spectacular natural resource, that we would consider selling it to a developer um, when it would no longer be in our hands, people wouldn't be able to use it if that developer chose 
um, to go in the direction of, of taking those rights away. I think that that's heartbreaking. I think it's heartbreaking that we would even consider um, letting this land go because once it disappears, it's gone. It's gone, we can't get it back. And um, there's absolutely no connection to our community or even to our beautiful state by an outside buyer. So I hope that I hope that the people, when they are considering this vote, and I hope that the board, um, when you are taking into consideration the wishes of the voters of Proctor, I hope that you consider that this is the legacy that we're leaving. Um, I hope that we're on the right side of this legacy, and that we leave this legacy for our children, for our grandchildren to enjoy in the future. They deserve it. We deserve it as a town. Thank you.